All right, so we're back, and this here is my basket. And in my basket, I keep well at the moment. I have all my little bits. Um, so my this is a little pouch that I made. I want I wanted to practice making a, a bag. I need to make a linen bag. So I, I practice with a smaller version, and uh, I like this design. So I think what I might do is with the bag, I like add a strap around, make it into a satchel kind of idea. But I, I made this one my comb. So the when I had finished this, I decided I was going to put my comb in it. But my comb hadn't come yet, and then when I actually got it, I realised that my comb is actually too small for well, you know, it kind of doesn't work in there. It's kind of heavy as well. So I might make one of these that's about half the size, and put the comb in there, and then use this for something else. But yeah, I do like this. What I want to do is I want to embroider my um, personal symbol on it. I'll get to that later on, what that's, m my plan for that is going to be. So anyway, let's put that aside. And uh, let's talk about, this is a, a, a comb. This is actually a Viking era comb, but I, I thought it was quite nice, so I got it anyway. And uh, it's actually made from bone, so that's pretty cool. It's actually pretty heavy. That over there. Okay, put this here. Also, my magnificent, magnificent, actually put it over here. My magnificent basket of tricks is this. This is my belt, which has recently just came in the post. So, I haven't really put a hole in it yet. To, uh, for, I don't know what this thing is called on the belt. I call it the arm, but I don't know what it's called. So, anyway, this is my awesome belt which came recently. Apparently this mythical creature is called a cross which I found quite ironic that I have it as the kind of dressing on my belt. Um, get into more about belts I guess another time but for now just showing you off some most of my um, kit. Um, in here I also have one of the most essential objects you can ever use in living history your bow your nice wooden bow mine is uh, beech wood i think yep beech wood and it's a nice simple wooden bowl which i just eat out of all the time that's pretty cool you go up here um i also have a well i have this i'll take this out this is a horn cup we'll get to that in a second this I think it's like a barbecue skewer, but I, I'm i using it as an eating pick. So uh, you kind of use it to hold things while you're cutting it. It's a basic idea. There's some nice wooden spoons. There's just simple wooden spoons. There's some nice small ones, just for eating, obviously. And uh, yeah. And this is my horn cup, which I use. It is a, actually from an African uh, species of cow some dust in it but um yeah um there was a trade with north africa so that's my excuse for actually using it because i also have besides from two other cups this one and these two are very similar style and this one is kind of a different kind of style shape to it so kind of actually in here at the moment I have some beeswax which I need to put in here to uh, seal around this so that it doesn't leak. Actually, put that in there, that in there, keep these separate. Um, just for now. I also have a nice horn bowl. Which is just a secondary bowl that I have in case I have someone come with me. So I have two spoons as well. So, so I had someone, or if someone needed a bowl, I have an extra bowl. Also, because I want to do a trader, I have extra goods to trade, and they're nice goods from North Africa. Also, like this one. This is a small bag. It's um, water buffalo hide. It's nice. It actually has like a separator inside. Separate two different things, two two different sides, and it's kind of the strap is a braided leather, so that's pretty cool. Uh, 
yeah, plain flying pass outside. Um, yeah, so some of my goods are spits from North Africa, but I I am in intending to do a trader. Actually, the sword I want to get is a uh, actually a, a manufactured from a um, based on a uh, Spanish find, so that's pretty pretty you know kind of gives me a reason for having stuff from North Africa that I've betrayed with through Spain. Uh, this is my small purse for putting coins in. There's currently nothing in it at the moment, but I do plan on getting some coins to throw in there at some point. Some nice pewter ones. Um, also my basket, I have a piece of bone, which I am going to make into a stylus, and some extra beeswax, which I'm going to make into a beeswax tablet for uh, Running down all the sales and the stocks and all the um, inventory list and kind of like how it would how a trader would actually have a like I, 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 like you'd see in a shop they, there's always the inventory list and all this kind of stuff so I'd have that on a beeswax tablet um, what am I going to show you next? Next, I can show you, when I'm at it, some of my projects which I'm still working on at the moment. Oh, let's just go into dies first. Okay, so when I bought this, this was like this. I'll turn upside down so I'm not going to give away what this is yet. This is felt. It's simple felt. It's just, it comes like bleached white. Um, yeah, this actually is the piece I'm going to make my hat out of. I just, I'm currently learning how to uh, make felt in, into a hat, because I'm pretty new to this stuff. Oh, chalk came off on the table. Um, so yeah. So here, this is my hood, which I showed you earlier, I think. I don't remember. Um, oh, it's got all the focus and weird. So yeah, when, when I originally made the hood, uh, well, I cut out the pattern, like this one, which is uh, in two bits at the moment, but I cut out the pattern for this in as one solid piece, but folded over. And then when I fold it out, then it's just this big thing. But this is two solid ones because I had to dye it separately. So I kept this one white and I dyed this one blue. And I'm going to sew them together and have two different colour, a hood with two different colours. Um, that's almost done actually. So this one is pretty much the next stage after that one. It already is sewed. Uh, I'm going to line it in linen and uh, give it some uh, kind of strength because it's very kind of flimsy and soft. Um, but yeah. So I do, I do all my own dyeing, and what I use for dyeing is, i move all these projects out of the way, so this is my dyeing kit, okay, this is the dyeing kit, and in my dyeing kit I have some like cups, I have obviously dye, and then I'll show you this in a second, and these, these are quite handy, oh, turn it upside down, because I'm not going to advertising anyone. Um, these are quite handy, I get them for like 50 cent and I just use them as uh, for stirring the dye because you put the dye in the bucket and you kind of stir it for like 45 minutes. Obviously rubber gloves, more dye, uh, I use Dylon but uh, other um, dyes are available. Uh, salt, uh, I usually use table salt, uh, other salts are available, and um, that's about it, I have two buckets, there's two of these, oh, stuck. there we go, I have two buckets, one for dyeing in, other one for rinsing in, um, I also have a basin, which I just put underneath the uh, stuff once dyed because uh, I dye in I dye stuff in, in my house 
So I kind of don't have, like in my apartment I mean. So I can't really throw stuff outside to dry, so I kind of dry it inside. So I put a basin in it to uh, stop um, dry getting all over the floor. This here is my little samples kit to show off uh, what different dyes at different temperatures come out, come out like. And when I'm dyeing something, I throw in like, just like a simple piece of linen into it so that uh, I can get like, a sample to put in here so I know what colour I want and its reaction to linen. Throw that in there. So yeah, I am going to be right back. <laughs> 